Welcome back to Bible study, to Paul's letter to the Philippian church. Welcome back to John Campbell and to Derek Walker. And um, I think they do put on the screen our names, so I, I don't say, and I am. Um, you can figure it out for yourselves. Just look on the scandal pages of the <laughs> social media or something. Um, so Philippians, I'm going to read from verse 12 to verse 26, and John will pray. Thanks, John. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add afflictions to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defence of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretence or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now also will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labour. Yet what shall I, what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to the remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We lift up to you now, Lord, this Bible study. Not only us, Lord, but all the viewers, wherever they are, whatever time of day it might be. Lord, and we ask that you open the eyes of our understanding. Lord, we ask that we might have this spirit of boldness, Lord, to speak out your word in truth and without fear. And Lord, we ask that all that we do will magnify Christ, that our Bible study here this evening will magnify Christ, Lord, and that he will be magnified in all that we say, in all that we do, and in all that we understand. Lord, the glory of God will be revealed for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 He's such a great guy, Paul. <laughs> you know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter what happens, he can see God's hand in it. And we have it in our for opening verse. You know, what's happened to him, God is using to mm. further the gospel. You know, what, if it, it, however terrible, he, he can see God's hand in it. More than what many of us do sometimes when we're afflicted. Yeah. I love the fact he's not focused on himself. Yeah. What, all that ma what comes through the whole passage is what matters to him is the gospel. Yeah. At, which, you know, God is glorified through the preaching of the gospel. So the furtherance of the gospel, that's what matters to mm. him. Of course, he's, he's got his critics because, you know, a lot of people will be saying, oh, look at Paul, you know, he's in jail, he's missed the will of God, you know, because yeah. uh, they, they're in competition with him. <laughs> and, um, you know, and he's making it clear, no, th this is not a failure, yeah. me being in jail. Yeah. This is actually causing the gospel to go forth. And, and even just um, without jumping too far ahead, I mean, people are preaching out of selfish ambition. Paul can still say, oh, isn't it wonderful? God's yeah. word is being preached. 
You know, it's yes, amazing on the generosity <laughs> of spirit. Yeah. He recognizes the total sovereignty of God. Yes. You know, nothing happens that God doesn't allow to happen. Yeah. And, and so he can rejoice in that. He can be thankful in all things because he, he recognizes the sovereignty of God at work. And, you know, you, 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 one is brought back to, is it Proverbs? Proverbs 3, I think it is, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and yeah. lean not on your own understanding. Yeah, yeah. Acknowledge him in all your ways yeah. and he mm. shall direct your paths. It, it's this lean not on your own understanding and, and, and Paul just recognises the sovereignty of God. In the natural it might seem contrary, it might seem not the right thing to happen, but that suggests that God isn't sovereign mm. and he won't have that. And so he, he knows that all this is God working out his plan and that the gospel will be preached and man will be saved by that preaching. Yeah, wonderful. God has this ability to work all things for good. Yes. Even bad things yes. for good. And, and you mentioned a few weeks ago about the... Uh, you, God has placed his servant Paul, you know, at this powerhouse of the gospel right into the middle of the house of Caesar. You know, you couldn't have manufactured that. You couldn't actually draw up a, stra a mission strategy yeah. <laughs> of getting into the absolute heart of power. Yeah. And it's so that no man may have excuse, not even Caesar. He's heard the gospel. That, that seems pretty clear that, that, you know, Caesar's household has heard the gospel. Yeah. He's heard the gospel. Yeah, because he's chained to a Roman soldier. Mm. And in fact, he talks about the praetorium, doesn't he, in verse 13. Yeah. It's been evident to the whole palace guard. Yeah. So there's about 10,000 elite soldiers. How many? 10,000 10, elite soldiers were stationed in Rome, yeah. which is really the emperor's bodyguard, but they're mm. the elite. They get double mm. pay, they get everything, pensions. And, and, and so Paul is chained on six-hour shifts to a different soldier. Yeah. And so he is obviously preaching to them all. Mm -hmm. And so the gospel, and he's telling them why he's been arrested, yeah. and he turns the conversation to the gospel every time. He says it's because of the gospel, and here's the, this is what the gospel is. And so they all know the gospel, and, and obviously many are getting saved, and the word is spreading. And it's reached, he says, over these last two years, the whole praetorium guard, and he says to all the rest of Rome. So, um, you know, He's probably the most well-known guy in Rome at this point, but, um, and they know that he's there for the gospel, not because he's committed some crime. So through the whole thing, and it's interesting in verse 12, it says, it's all that's happened to me, and it's really Acts 21 to 28, yeah. is everything that had yeah. happened to him, his arrest, his imprisonment in Caesarea, his journey to Rome, and all, all of that has happened for the furtherance of the gospel. This word furtherance is pro cope, which means advancement, and actually it was used. For instance, if an army was to make progress, let's say there's a wood in the way or, or difficult terrain, it's, it's, it's calling the cutters, the people who cut through the, through yeah. the stuff to, to create a path. Yeah. So what Paul is saying is, although you know this is, this is God who led me this way, and I've been cutting a path mm. through all the resistance yeah. right to the heart of Rome. Excellent. And so it's not just the poor people that are hearing, yeah. it's, it's the heart of power that is hearing. Or God is cutting the path or, is or the through, Spirit. Through, yeah. through Him, yes, yes through it's, the events. It's amazing. The other analogy I've got in my mind is a computer virus. You know, it's, it's like it spreads throughout the whole computer. <laughs> You know, uh, and uh, or through the whole World Wide Web sometimes. And, 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 you know, it's like the gospel, you know, all the power and network of Rome, it, it's there and it's, it's unstoppable. It it's, doesn't matter whether you have this protected imperial, you know, household. God's word gets through there. Yes. Furtherance. I, li I like that. Yeah. Cutting yes. down the forest. <laughs> but, you know like a sort of highway straight into Caesar's There's Nothing household. could stop it. Yeah, quite the, amazing. The word will achieve that for which it has been sent. Yeah. Will not return void. Yeah. How easily we skip over those words, don't That's we? That's right, exactly. Think of the depth of meaning that's exactly. being illustrated here so clearly. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I just wonder what's going through the Caesar's mind. You know, you've got this sort of insignificant prisoner who's literally 
Uh, the, guard, the guards, could, they, they can be a judge of a man, can't they? Mm-hmm. You can see the character of a man there. You're absolutely you're an irrepressible. Yeah. Shining out the, the, the truth, speaking. That's quite amusing. To I only know the Caesars through films, and they don't, <laughs> they don't look that impressive to me. <laughs> These characters are so supposedly in charge. Sorry. No, it's just yeah. amusing to think what it would be like to be chained to the Apostle Paul for six hours. Solid. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Unbelievable. <laughs> A lot of them come to faith. Yeah. And, the, and even in Caesar's palace as well, because it talks uh, at the greetings at the end, I think, though all those who are in Caesar's palace yeah. in his household greet and greetings. So the Christians are, are, yeah. are already every, everywhere in, around yeah. Caesar's uh, operation. And imagine, just, just think, he's, or he, someone whacks him across the face or, you know, tries, and the response is Christ-like. You yes. know, it, it's not a normal, it's almost not a, a human no. response. So the, the impact that they would, uh, you know, have gained from just being, uh, he responds, you know, everything negative, oh, praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this is furthering you, you, the gospel. I can't help wondering whether... Paul, we're not told, where Paul actually held, as it were, Bible studies in his quarters, yeah. that they all yeah. came to hear yeah. him. Yeah. I bet they did. Yeah. They, because the gospel stirs up the curiosity within you. You want to know more. Yeah. And uh, only Paul would have been able to give the answers. I can imagine it must have been quite something. Well, Acts 28 describes that. Yes, it does, the, actually. You're quite right. People would come. Yes. And, of course, these Roman soldiers would have heard all of this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting that he says, you know, that they that they all know that my chains are in Christ. Mm. In other words, he's been preaching the gospel to them. You know, every, everyone he gets to talk to, he explains to them why he's in chains. Mm. And the reason is the gospel. So he uses the chains as the pretext for sharing the gospel. And in a sense, whatever situation we're in, we should turn the conversation to the gospel. That was Paul's heart. The gospel, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, it's the power of God unto salvation. So whatever his situation, he will relate it to the gospel because he knows that in it's the end... It's a miracle that he wasn't, a miracle that he wasn't actually executed immediately because he's opposing the imperial cult. You know, he's opposing the worship of... The gospel is don't worship Caesar. That's a, that's a sort of completely blasphemous to their belief system. So it, that alone would have, would have sort of pricked up ears to think, how is he still alive, this chap, who's opposing our whole system? Because that's what it, what the gospel was completely contrary to Roman rule. Yes. Unless I'm wrong. I mean, he had the rights of a Roman citizen, but what he was saying was, was actually completely um, seditious, that there's another ruler other than Caesar. But there, so that w- alone would have been quite powerful, uh, you know, a uh, message to the Imperial Guard. You know, we're guarding this chap. Time, What's he yeah. doing here? At that time, the Jews were allowed to practice their religion, which in a sense yeah. was similar. They, okay. they resisted a bit the, uh, you know, the Roman ways. Yeah. But uh, of course, Paul, yeah. they were, Paul was being rejected by the Jewish establishment. So that yeah. made his position Tricky. Uh, yeah, in, it Tricky is places. interesting. That's a, you know, you've got Herod uh, and John the Baptist. John the Baptist did not, he was a great man of God. He didn't last long, mm-hmm. you know, when he was opposing, you know, Herod's behaviour. He'd done his work, hadn't he, really? Yeah. He'd fini- he finished, yeah. His, yeah. He'd fi- he'd finished his work. Um, uh, Paul, I suspect, again, we're not really told, but I suspect that he used the wisdom of God. I, I'm, I'm thinking when Jesus was challenged about, you know, who's should we pay taxes to Caesar? And, and, and the way Jesus handled that, we, we kept all sides happy. Yeah. And I suspect Paul was able to do that as well. The, the Lord gave him the wisdom in which to fend off. Yeah. The, uh, they would have come, you're quite right, these accusations, are you usurping Caesar? Mm. Um, and he'd have dealt with that more than satisfactorily. Yeah, very good, yeah. Because the Lord was you know, put to death and there, there, yeah. was no, there was no grounds to put him to death. No. Yeah, God, God sort of kept Paul alive. Yes, for, for, for all of this to be available yes. to us.
Okay, um, so you know they're always very long sentences, aren't they? We split them up into verses, mm -hmm. but it, yes, it's, he's, it's the same thought in verse fourteen, yeah. which is, you know, God has worked this for good. First yeah. of all, I'm through Paul himself. He has brought the gospel right in to the Praetorium Guard and yeah. and so forth. But also, his example has stirred up the whole church in Rome yeah. to be bold because they were afraid, yep. again, because they were afraid of the kickback. Mm. And so generally they weren't witnessing as they should have. Mm. But now they see Paul actually in prison, you know, and yet he isn't backing down. He's preaching the gospel and he's getting results. He's getting success. Yeah. And so, well, if Paul can do that, so, now that gives courage yeah, exactly. to the others, you yeah. see. And so that's the, that's a key thing of leadership, really. Um, and what a terrible it thing. It gives courage. Yeah, yeah. what a others. terrible thing if, if Paul had shied away. Yeah. Or a, as it, today, you know, we could shy away from, even on Christian TV, we could sort of cut back, you know, because of fear of our yes. personal, you know, our personal predicaments. But if you stand firm, and even if, you know, and there are plenty of heroes today, I think, who absolutely stand firm, and it does make you think, yeah, Got nothing to lose. And absolutely, on the gospel, you, you have to. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, because he was confident, yeah. they were made confident by the fact, and they were able to be bold in speaking the word without fear. So he says, most of the brethren now have been, you know, he's, he's kind of triggered a whole kind of revival in Rome, yeah. Yeah. where now all the believers are saying, look, if Paul can do it, and he's actually chained to a Roman soldier, we should put away our fear and we should start yeah. preaching the gospel. So it's not just Paul's ministry, but also the whole church in Rome has been galvanized yeah. through his two years there. You might think, what a waste of Paul's precious time. But actually, God has a way of working, yeah. working everything for good. And, uh, you know, he, he realized, he's saying, don't be depressed for me. Uh, I, this is, I'm having a great time. I'm, yeah. I'm joyful because Amazing. God is being glorified in Amazing. Rome. Amazing. Know. Amazing. And then uh, John, he's, he, he says, and, and then verse 15, some <coughs> preach Christ from envy and rivalry. Mm. And then the following verse, yes. oh, that's okay. Because <laughs> yeah. it's still Christ and it's yeah, still Yeah, it is. And, and you, you know, they, people were aware of Paul and, and, and people who are not fully submitted to the Lordship of Christ, they uh, can allow ambition, personal ambition to get in the way, and they were pro probably jealous of the great following that Paul had. And, yeah. and, and if, you know, particularly the following that he was getting in the, the Roman court, they, what is this? Yeah. They, they probably were currying favour with senators and things like that, and, and, and were just downright jealous. And, and so they were trying to build a bigger church, a mega church, yeah. and become televangelists or whatever. Right. <laughs> this became much more important to them than preaching the gospel. Yeah. And, and they were, com in that sense, they were competing with Paul. But Paul sees it for what it is. It, it doesn't mean they believed any less. It doesn't mean that they were preaching an untrue message. It's just mm. their motives weren't right. Mm. But regardless of that, the Lord worked with it. And trying to follow a, a formula. You, yeah. you mentioned televangelists. I, you know, Billy Graham was so successful. There were plenty of Billy Graham sort of lookalikes, weren't there, yeah. that sort of emerged, you know, to, to create the, the, the following. Um, and, and the gospel was preached, but they weren't Billy Graham. No. You know, they, they, but it, uh, it was for an era, as it were. And I do think that we do have on Christian television people who find a formula. Yes. And, and then, oh, that works, and I'll, I'll use that formula. But again, in a funny old way, that I, I know, um, I, 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 amazing story. I remember Noni Darwish, she, she was, uh, uh, and she runs, I think, something called Arabs for Israel, she did many years ago. And we had her on Rev TV. And she, what, she was, grew, grew up under Nasser, Abdel Nasser, and her father, I think, was a general under Nasser. So, you know, completely um, separate from the, um, the gospel and the Christian side of things, but she, she hears the Lord on Christian TV. Mm. <laughs> you know, I can't remember which evangelist it was. It probably wasn't one that we would put on our list of, of no. kosher. 
but she had heard the Lord and come to know the Lord through, and that's what happens in a funny old way. I, I, I've, I've got a member of my family who, who was um, in an end times sect, and he came to the Lord through, through a scheme that, uh, on the surface, you'd say that's completely off the wall. Yes. Um, they, they had a scheme of reading God's word um, by just randomly opening a page mm. and getting direct instructions from God from the first and, uh, 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 and last verses of a double, uh, two pages that were opened up. And that was mm. God's instructions for the day. And you could completely take it apart, but it just so happened uh, that um, uh, he... It, it, it summed up this random opening of God's word, which was like a control mechanism, summed up his whole life and he repented and God spoke to him. Mm. So God can speak to us, you know, irrespective of the motives yes. of the preacher. Mm. Yes. Discuss, but I think, yeah. I think that's, that's evident. Well, because salvation is a sovereign work of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, it's, it's he that comes to you, it's he that prepares your heart, it's he that injects that faith and yeah. grace by which you can be saved, irrespective of what the chap up front is saying. He didn't stay in this end time sect, but, that, but strangely, yeah. that's what, what is, um, yes. turned his whole yes. heart around. Yes. Yeah. And, and so you, you, you come back again to, to election and predestination. And that, you know, and you, I, in, in the book of Acts, I think it's in, I forget where it is, I, I find it hard sometimes to remember the chapter and verse, where it, it talks about, you know, all those who were to be saved responded. Do you know the bit, yeah, bit I'm yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about? And it's such a clear statement of election predestination yeah. that it's very hard to refute it. And so you see the same thing. If, 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 you're, if, you know, if God has your number, yeah. on the day that you're going to be saved, you will be saved. Yeah. And, and regardless of, of, of who the person up the front is delivering the message, you will hear what God wants you to hear. Yeah. Amazing. Regardless of what's being said. Amazing. Which is, which is absolutely... And Billy Graham always used to say in his appeal, well, you may have come, you know, you've got a whole stadium of people, you know, for very different reasons. Mm. Yes. You know, you may have come for, you know, to be with friends or to do this or so. And God's word can speak to, speak to you from yes. wherever you are. Yes. Um, okay. Ministers do have to be careful, though, because there is a lot of, I think, you know, uh, rivalry. Yeah. And uh, ambition. And yeah. I want to be the successful one. Yeah. I want to be the one with the biggest following, yeah. have the biggest church. And, and in competition with other ministers. That's right. Yes. And, That's and or even people who, on YouTube or whatever, want to be the, the prominent one, the yeah. one that people exactly. listen to. And they're, they're actually, their motivation is, is, is selfish ambition. Yes. To be the, the success. Yeah. Uh, and envy if someone else is more successful than they are. And then, therefore, they attack them. So I think these are the ministers mm. that saw themselves as the big shots in Rome. Yeah. Suddenly, everyone's paying attention to Paul as the big shot. And they don't like that. <laughs> no. they, they want to be the, yeah, They want to have the biggest yeah. church or whatever. And, and so they're actually taking pot shots at Paul. Yeah. You know, like... Uh, what, if he was in the will of God, he wouldn't be in prison and, yeah. and all of this. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and that is now, a good one. That's used they, a lot. You know, mm. And then they see Paul getting these results. Yeah. So to stay in the game, as it were, they, they have to preach the gospel now. I mean, yeah. they, they can't, you that's know, Paul's, they're seeing Paul is getting results. And so they're following in, a in method. order, they've got, to, they've got to match Paul. They've yes. got to start trying to preach yeah. the gospel yeah, more. Yeah. To, you know, and so Paul is saying, well, you know, well, praise God, they're hearing He's the gospel. He's so generous. He's not he? saying these are yeah. false ministers. No, no, not at all. They're preaching the gospel. Yeah. But they're, um, they're, they've got a their lot of flesh in their motivations. Yeah. And they won't get the reward that they, they should get because they're, they're doing it for the wrong reasons. But Paul is a big, big man. He, he's just happy that the gospel's getting out. He yeah. doesn't care so much that every, you know, for his reputation. Amazing, but uh, so he's stimulating these, you know. It's amazing. Kind of, I, it's so generous hearted, isn't he? Yes. It's just Because it says they suppose to add affliction to my chains. In other That's words, an interesting they thing. actually, they, they want to, uh, they want to give Paul a hard time. Yeah. But they, to, for them to have credibility, they, they, they had to up their game. Yeah. 
in, in yeah. <laughs> preaching the gospel to get so they've got a platform to attack Paul because they're envious of it Paul. is interesting I, I do think that there are those who go who, who go around to the Christians who are persecuted deserve it because of because they're doing something wrong mm -hmm. but that's well, not the message in the scriptures there are people who say Paul missed God that's why he, yeah. you know he shouldn't yeah, he, he ignored the prophecies you know you're going to get He's not getting the health and wealth and I think that's completely gospel, wrong he? you know yeah completely he, he knew wrong. he was going to get arrested but he knew it was the will of God because we do have this this sort of theology today that if you if you're if you're under affliction then you're in sin yes you know you're you're out of god's favor and um it's it's not the message of paul no. it's not the message of paul um there are also promises of blessing but you know i, I if you if you just create a theology of health and wealth is going to be i mean god does want to bless us mm. you know and uh, 3 John 2, you know, beloved, yeah. I wish above all things that you are in, in health and prosper. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, persecution That's right. If it does not mean you're out of the will of God. That's right. It's probably a sign that you're in the will of God. And, and the other one is, you know, um, what is it? That we also rejoice. It's in uh, Romans uh, 5, it's also in Romans 8. Um, that it, you know, if if we also share in his sufferings, we'll share in his glory. And then in, in Romans five, it's we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, and we also rejoice in our sufferings. Yeah. That that's not a message that fits in with this exclusive blessing message that you're only going to have. But there's a, a level of blessing that we that isn't yeah. health and wealth. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, Another big subject. I normally, I normally bring that kind of thing up when we've got two minutes to go. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, so, yeah, I picked up just some, some obviously are preaching out of envy, but others out of goodwill. Out He's of not, love, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. That's right. Exactly. So there are, it, it's, it's, only, it's only some, but obviously some fairly prominent people yeah. were really competing with Paul. Yeah. And they didn't like the fact that Paul was uh, getting the limelight and... They were, but, they're, they're but he's also it. conceding that not everyone no. is doing that. Many people love Paul, yeah, and they have goodwill toward Paul, and they're doing it out of love. They yeah. love for God, obviously, but also because they love, you know, they, they look to Paul as the leader and they love him. They are uh, following his leadership, and so, yeah. you know, in a way, you you a disciple becomes like his teacher. So they see Paul being strong for the gospel, then they become strong for the gospel. Yeah, that's so, right. uh, they, they, because they love Paul, so, um, yeah. and they love God. Yeah. And so knowing, so, but it is related to their love for Paul, um, because knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel, that's the apologia again. And, and, and being honest. So there's a dishonesty in the first example, um, and there's an honesty in recognizing Paul is there for the gospel, because which is what he is. Yes. Yes. You know, and so there are two groups. Some are actually not honestly portraying why someone is suffering. Yes, they they believe that Paul's he is appointed. He's in <laughs> God's will. Yeah. And he is he is fighting for the gospel. Yeah. And therefore they are in love. Yeah. Coming behind Paul and and preaching the gospel. And that's probably m most of the people. But there were others who obviously had their own followings who were yeah. competing against Paul. Um, but the end result was they were preaching the gospel more. Yeah. So to, just to stay, um, stay competitive. So I, yeah, no, I think um, Paul's writing these verses. And we, we said um, earlier how, how Paul would be emphasizing the glass half full always. You know, he, he was, but I think he found himself getting down into something you know ver verse 17 he had to put a punctuation mark in there so he said what then it's as though he took a breather he didn't want the whole of his philippian <laughs> gospel to be on on this subject mm. but he's just as an uh, incidentally this is yeah. what is happening and then and then he sort he sort of closes it down a bit doesn't he in verse well, what 18 then? he's kind of summarizing yeah exactly he's summarizing and he's saying in either way yeah Whatever the motivations are going on, yeah. pretense or truth, 
Christ is preached, and that's what matters in the end. Exactly. My reputation doesn't exactly. matter. Um, all that matters in the bottom line is that Christ is preached, yeah. and therefore I rejoice. Mm. Um, and and that's uh, th that's amazing, you know. Yeah. Like for a pastor, you know, the the classic thing is, you know, a new new guy comes to town, starts a church, and quickly becomes twice the size of your church, and yeah. and you rejoice because I've known some pastors get really bent out of shape and bitter yeah. about that, and they'll yeah. find reasons why this other church is wrong and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, for it's it's a big thing to be able to say, I rejoice yeah. that they're doing so well. And the best is John, John the Baptist, his disciples are saying, look, they're all sort of peeling off and going to, to this chap, Jesus of Nazareth. May he increase. Yes. And may I decrease. That is, that is a great attitude, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Which, of course, comes up in chapter two when he, when he says, you know, uh, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but always consider the others. So, so Paul has sort of flagged it a bit here in in his personal yeah. message and then he's teaching it in chapter two yeah. yes he's not teaching things that he's not actually living himself no he's not trying to build his own kingdom no you know no he's building absolutely. the kingdom of god absolutely and uh, and and paul you know he refers to his message all the way through as the gospel it's what he calls his message yeah. and, and he defines the gospel i think it's in corinthians where he he, he you know it, i can't remember a verbatim, but essentially it's, it, it, it's Christ crucified for the sin of the world, Christ risen from the dead, mm. John Campbell's paraphrase. But that's what he's preaching. He's preaching eternal life. Now that has consequences upon behavior once you understand it, and he does preach that, but it's secondary to his message. His message is Christ crucified and Christ risen from the dead, and what that means to mankind. It's not, you know, sermon on this this week and sermon on that next week. No, it's eternal That's life right. and, and yeah. what Christ has done yeah. to obtain that for us. You often, you often, so I do, driving through Sussex, sometimes in Wiltshire, you see just a plaque outside a church that says, we preach Christ crucified. <laughs> that's all they put outside their church. It's Oh, that's it's strong. Incredible. It's strong. I've never seen this. Oh, I have. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. some, some mm -hmm. of the... the Strict Baptist churches and so on. And it, it, it's good. I, again, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't put any of these folk down. I don't know what's going on inside the church, but yes. I think you, we rejoice because yeah, we see a that's plaque. That's wonderful. You know, or you see someone out holding up a placard if you're still allowed to do that without getting arrested in Britain on the streets. <laughs> and it is just the punchy message, you know, repent. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. The end is near, or something. You know, they are—they're preaching something, and it's God's word. Yes. And, and I don't believe people can um, be excused by saying, "Oh, they look a bit eccentric," or, "Or they, you know, they they look a little bit sort of off off the trolley." It's still the message is there. Christ yes. is being preached. It's marvelous. It's so mar I rejoice in that. I, I I never put down these folk. No, I, 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 you're quite right. I I, 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 I think. Mm. Christ is preached. Christ is preached, that's, that's the important thing. Uh, it always rather saddens me when outside the churches, you don't get a wonderful message like that, you yeah. get half a message. You yeah. get John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave us over the God and Son. Yes. Yes, yes. and? Exactly, the following and verse. <laughs> without the following verse, it hasn't got a lot to offer. That's right. They, exactly. But they leave it there. Exactly. It's, Why would they do that? It's what David Pawson calls hot water bottle Christianity, <laughs> just to make you know keep you warm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's not. It's just. But but we rejoice in that as well, by the way, John, because <laughs> it is there. Anything that can trigger yes. something mm -hmm. is is great. And I I think you know if we can get get the message out through whatever means, yeah, which is what Paul's saying. Yes. Um, yeah. Even through, you know, Christian television. Mm. Of course. Perish the thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, that, it's the gospel, and, and it, it, th through all his writings, it's the gospel, and he says exactly. it time and time and exactly. time again. Yeah. And, and the, as we've said before, and as Paul said a long time before we did, it's the gospel that's the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. If the churches don't preach it, 
Yeah. You know, how many unsaved people are sitting in the pews? I don't know the answer to that, but I, I suspect there are many. There are many who are members of Christendom, but not members of the Church of Christ. That's right. Um, and they need to... Well, they're hearing the gospel. They, they need to hear the gospel. Mm. We still have that heritage. It's there. Yeah. It's even in Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are, there are truths from God's Word, for, yes. you know, that came maybe from Tyndale's translation, and there they are embedded in, yes. in Shakespeare. Um, so we should rejoice in that. Yeah, no, we do rejoice. It's easy to be critical. It's, but it's not, as you say, it's, it's often, it's, become, it's, it's fading. You know, the potency of the message is... is yes, and, and the Gospel is, is not the whole Bible. It's a specific message. It's yes. the entry yep. message of That's the right. Bible. Yes. So although you might have churches that <clears throat> will give truth, yep. it's, are they preaching the Gospel? Mm. That's yes. a big question. Mm. Are they being presented with Christ and mm. His claims on them, yeah. His death and His resurrection, yeah. and the urgency of their need to respond? Yep. Yes. Um, because without the gospel, in a way, without the gospel, the rest of the Bible doesn't make sense. I mean, you, That's right. it does, but I mean, you, you, you don't really qualify to understand the rest of the, God, the mm -hmm. Bible until you've embraced the gospel, first of all. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. I think it was Spurgeon who said, you know, whatever you're preaching on in the Bible, you should always bring the gospel into your message somehow. Yeah. Because That's people very good. need to hear. It's so important. I mean, you know, the Bible is full of truth and you can preach truth Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and in the midweek and people say, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. But they haven't, not believing the gospel. That's what's going to save them. Mm. The remarkable thing about preaching is that um, from a preacher's perspective is uh, when he speaks to, you know, congregants afterwards or years later, and they say it was something you said, and, yeah. and and when you cast your mind back, it was nothing at all to do with what you thought you were saying or what you meant to say. It was just God's word, the Holy Spirit inspired word, like a, an yes. arrow going into someone's heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're not. It's through the foolishness of preaching. Yeah, but it's still God's word. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, what a privilege. And there, you know, it brings a lot of humility, really. I mean, you, you see Paul's heart for the gospel, really, again, in verse 19 and 20, yeah. in a big way. There's yeah. a lot in those two. But it's, it all hangs around, what, what does he mean? Well, I know that this will turn out for my deliverance. Yeah. What is this deliverance mm. that he's looking for? Yeah. Mm. Okay, because I thought, well, maybe, you know, he's, he's praying to be released from prison. But as we read on, we realize it's not quite as simple as that. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, he says, through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So that's interesting. He's saying that through, um, it, he's talking about the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That's what he desires. Mm -hmm. And part of that supply comes through the prayers of others. So he's, he's really aware that he needs their prayers. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he's trusting in Christ for the supply of the Spirit. But somehow, because we're all part of a body, we need each other's prayers for that full supply of the Spirit. Mm. Mm. But it's interesting, this word supply is epikorigio. Yeah. That means on behalf of the choir. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> in, the, in those days, for instance, you, you might have traveling groups like a choir or a dancers or something yeah. like this. And they could only do their performance if there was a rich man who would sponsor that who would make a big donation. So mm. the idea is this, this big, generous donation of the Spirit. on behalf of the choir. Agreed. So in the same way, it's God is this generous benefactor who will yeah. that's, supply. That's great. Um, that's wonderful. Su supply his Spirit. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I thought originally he was praying for deliverance from prison, but no. it's not quite that simple. No. So that he could be with them. Go well, on. there was that. Verse 20. But if you, yeah. yeah. According to my earnest expectation and hope. So he's, he's hoping for something. Yeah. And, and we're naturally, we think he's hoping for a certain kind of natural outcome, presumably to be delivered from prison. But actually what he is praying for and wants the supply of the Spirit for is that in nothing I shall be ashamed. Yeah. So as we read on, we'll see he's, 
he doesn't mind dying. That's right. And also, he's happy to be released so he, his ministry can continue. That's not the issue, really, for him. The issue is that he will not be ashamed. You know, he says, I am not ashamed of the That's gospel right. because it's the power of God unto salvation. To be ashamed of something means you do not t talk about it. That's right. You keep your mouth shut. You're a bit ashamed. And you don't really believe in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. In, down. You, you don't talk about what you're ashamed yeah. of. I don't know That's what right. you're ashamed of in yeah. your life, but you're yeah. probably not going to talk about it to me. Yeah. You know? well, I don't know. I've, I don't mind. I'm, I'm no, we don't need to know. <laughs> but, uh, but notice, in other words, he's saying that I, I open my mouth. Yeah. What he's afraid of, and that's the wrong word, is that when he's under the pressure of the trial, mm. he'll be intimidated. He won't give a witness. Mm. That's what bothers him. Yeah. So he, he wants their prayers so that with all boldness, that's right. as always, yeah. Christ will be we'll magnified be honored. in my body. Exactly. Yeah. Whether by life or by death. That's in right. other words, that's the issue powerful. is not, I'm not praying to live or to die. That's a secondary issue. Mm. The main issue is that I'm faithful to the gospel, that Christ will be magnified. Maybe That's in it. my death, That's it. I will That's die it. as a martyr, exactly. you know, and I'll be magnifying Christ that way. Mm. Or maybe I'll live on and that way, keep preaching the gospel, I'll magnify. But all that matters to me is mm. I'll, I'll be true. And there's, the uh, there's that other scripture about I beat, you know, not that I've already attained it. I beat myself. He doesn't want to fail the Lord. He doesn't want to let the Lord down. He doesn't want exactly. to let the Lord down. And that, and but that's the deliverance, but the, the, you were saying about that, that being the deliverance. Who deliverance from fear. Yep. Deliverance, deliverance from, from fear. It's, it, I would say it's the word salvation. Yep. So, you. Yep. so obviously he's not praying for his eternal salvation. I'm sure he's assured yep. of that. Um, and it's not specifically for deliverance from jail. Mm. So it's got to be uh, the salvation, which is like the right outcome. Yeah. And the right outcome is that Christ will be magnified through me. That's good. However, That's good. which way God chooses that would happen, yeah. that, that God's power would flow through me and Christ would be glorified through me. Mm. And that's the salvation, it's almost I think. So epic. <laughs> Isn't it, John? I mean, we, we, some, we, us mere mortals, sometimes, you know, we, it's almost beyond us, we, you know, that someone could be so absolutely devoted to the Lord's honour. I, I look at, I, I could say that I'm ashamed of the fact that I'm not always like that. I'm ashamed of the fact that I, I went to four schools and I never, ever spoke, even though I came from a Christian background, I never spoke about the Lord. It was only when I went to the a boarding school, finally, I, the, the, I'm ashamed of opportunities that I've missed yes. when people have, have asked uh, me open, it was like an open goal question, like, you know, I saw in the Billy Graham crusade, <laughs> behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of, yeah, what does, what does that mean, Tim? And, you know, <laughs> feel a bit flushed as a kid, you know, I don't want to get into that one. You know, I feel ashamed of, the, of all of that. And yet you've got Paul here who just stands you know, it's, it's all genuine. He, he does not want to um, dishonor the Lord in any way. He doesn't want to miss any opportunity. But notice he's aware of the power of his flesh, of the flesh, of his flesh. Yeah. And principalities and powers. Yeah. Because he knows he needs that supply yeah. uh, of the spirit and he needs their prayer. Mm. Mm. He, he, he knows that the flesh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak yeah. to do the will of God. Yeah. So even Paul himself doesn't say, well, I'm the great apostle Paul, mm. surely I will do it. No, he, he's concerned enough that he is praying for that boldness. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't, didn't come to him naturally. No, that's right. Yeah, it is he boldness, I'll be honest. Uh, you know, something switched and I, I think the spirit came and, and, and gave me a boldness that I'd never had before. I had another opportunity where there was a Basilea Schlink, I think her name was Mother Basilea, mm, yeah. all these wonderful plaques. And one of them was at one of our Christian centres, and, and we had a, a helper, who, you know, from uh, from abroad, who, who asked, who, who looked up at this one that said, "Father, I don't understand, but I trust you." And they said, "Well, that's rubbish, isn't it? You know, how can you trust someone you don't understand?" And I was, I knew the answer, but I, I, I wasn't bold. Mm. I didn't have that spirit of, mm. of boldness. And it was only a number of years later where I really understood it in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's no longer there, this plaque. 
But that same plaque was there under that ancient olive tree where, where the Lord, as though it's the Lord's word saying, I tr so he's there about to um, go to the cross and he says, I don't understand. It's the deepest sort of, but my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's really deep. Could have really expanded on that if I had the boldness. And I think there are many, many, many Christians today really love the Lord, but you know, a bit like Peter, they deny yes. him. If you, if you, three times, like in the garden, Jesus said, "Pray with, pray with me," because yeah. the flesh is willing. Yeah. No, the, sorry, so the spirit is willing. Yeah. The flesh is weak. Yeah. In other words, if you are prayerless, when that moment comes. You'll, you'll bow to the pressure of the flesh, yeah. just to say nothing. And, and in the same way, because Peter didn't pray, mm. when that temptation came in the Garden of Gethsemane, he failed the Lord. Yeah. Because he, he and, and it talks about the readiness of the gospel of, you know, the shoes mm. are, in the armor are the readiness mm. to, to share That's the right. gospel. So it's that readiness. And that readiness only happens if we are like Paul, praying. He wasn't yeah. just leaving things to chance. He was praying yeah. for the supply of that spirit and yeah. wanting them to pray yeah. so that when that moment came, mm -hmm. that opportunity came, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to preach the gospel. If we just casually go around hoping yeah. something will happen, when that thing happens, the flesh will be on us to say, keep your mouth we, John, we've yeah. got this other element in Romans 7 where, where Paul is... You know, it's not the Paul of Philippians 1, it's a Paul of Romans 7, where he, he's basically saying, wretched man that I am. Yes. I, you know, yes. The spirit is willing, yes. but the flesh is weak. That's right, oh wretched man that I am. You don't wallow in the fact that the flesh... Deliver me from this body of flesh. Uh, it's, it's powerful stuff, isn't it? I'm just listening to what Derek yeah. was saying, and, mm. and you know, I, it, I just know that's right. And, and think of this man, Paul. I mean, he knew that he knew that he knew. This, this isn't just something he's latched onto, think, I'm going to run with this, I believe this, this is a good story. I, I mean, think of the revelations that he'd had, not only on the on, on the road to Damascus, but, but you know, subsequent to that, what had happened to him, what he'd seen, what he'd learned one-on-one -on -one from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So there was no question, but he knew, and he just lived it, it just emanated from him. But, but he's still a man of flesh. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, the, it's not, as Paul himself said, it's not me that sins, it's sin in me. It's, so this is powerful, this thing mm -hmm. has a power within it, mm. and it's fighting with enmity, so it was a flesh is at enmity with the spirit. So it's fighting all the time, fighting truth, mm. fighting mm. Uh, freedom, fighting courage. It's, it, it does it. Now, Isn't it amazing, though, that the, these truths are coming through Paul's experience? Yes. You know, he, 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 he sort of, he's teaching us through what's going on in his spiritual warfare That's and right. his spiritual walk yes. it is it is and in Romans 7 really powerful. he comes yeah. through to the victory in Romans 8 yeah which is where he learns yeah. it's by the supply of the spirit yeah. Yeah. that we overcome it is the that great chapter the isn't it um, chapter 8 is so in 7 chapter. he's struggling in his own strength yeah yes yeah but when he realizes thanks be to god who gives me yeah, you know, victory then he, he then now it's w about walking in the spirit in mm. Romans eight. Mm. It's like the supply of the spirit. Yeah. So, but if we if we're prayerless, we can't tap into that. That's right. If we're prayerless, we're kind of trying to manage ourselves. Yeah. And maybe we could seem to get along fine, but when that moment hits us, that crucial moment, mm. when we're in the flesh, we will find ourselves failing. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's such an important teaching point that, you know, it'd be very easy to gloss over it, but I think it's, it is so important and it's why so many people struggle. You know, we, we're all, many people are too busy. I find prayer very difficult in my own life because my, so much time is taken up um, uh, that it's just sometimes so hard to find the time, but it's crucial. And, and you know, we're learning this through Paul, that prayer, he, I mean, he's quite clearly has a for want of another description, a full baptism of the Holy Spirit. But notwithstanding that, he still needs that 
prayer support that the Spirit never fails. Mm. Now you say, well, the Holy Spirit can't fail, you know, but that's complacent because Paul makes it very clear that there is some way that it does fail. He does fail, and it doesn't, of course, failure is the wrong word. Perhaps he just holds himself back because it is so important. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's, it's such an important point you brought out, Derek, mm-hmm. that, that, that to be ready always mm-hmm. with a word in season or for the right response, mm-hmm. we need this prayer. We need to pray. Okay. And, and he prayed. We're in our last four minutes. Oh, Are we going to oh. get to um, verse 26? I wonder. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, go on. But, um, well, he prayed a number of times. He asked them to pray for boldness, didn't he? Yeah. So this is something supernatural that God gives the boldness. We must pray for boldness to preach the gospel because yeah. it, that doesn't come naturally. That's right. But of course, we, we should mention verse 21 uh, at Big least. Time. Because Big time. he's talking about living or dying. Yeah. And now we see his heart as he confronts the fact he's about to face the judge. Yeah. And if he's found guilty, he's off. It's death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think we can cover a little part yes. of it. I mean, it's... For, yeah, I mean, the what a great it, it just, verse. I mean, it, it's a pa- yes, isn't it a powerful verse? Because it, up until that time, it, it, it's 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 Christ, it's living, it's Christ, and then suddenly he he pivots and says, "And to die is gain." For me to live, and is then Christ, explains it, and to die is gain. Yeah, awesome. It, it awesome is the right yeah. word. For our a, American viewers. <laughs> yeah. you know, this is, There's this that wonderful is prayer, awesome. isn't there, early in Acts, this I can't remember awesome. where it is, where Peter prays for the spirit of boldness. Yeah. You can personalise that. Yeah. Take it, I, I can't give you chapter and verse. Can you give chapter and verse? It's in Acts 4, isn't it? Acts 4, yes, I thought it was in, in Acts 4. And Peter gives this, this wonderful prayer which you can mm. pick up and, and, and pray for it in your own life. Yeah, yeah. Mm. thank you. Yes. Um, uh, he expands on it. If I'm to live in the flesh, and then he explains what that is, and then he talks about, which is better, well, you know, it to be, you know, I, I'm a hard press. I don't know which one to choose now, because he's enjoying it, isn't he? Um, he is actually enjoying the, the challenge and all of the stresses of this life. But then he says, oh, you know, actually, hard pressed to choose. Yes. To die is gain. Yeah, I mean, he's not afraid of death, obviously. No. Because he knows. Well, of course, he's already been to heaven, I, th- I think yeah. so. You know, in yes. Corinthians, he, That's right. he says, I know yeah. a man in Christ. That's I think he's talking right. about him. himself yes. Yes. Yeah. because he didn't want to name himself yeah. in that. But that he went to heaven. He saw yeah. inexpressible things. Yeah. So he knows that there's nothing to be afraid about, that, that it will be glorious. So for him personally, it's gain. It's gain. But he's kind of saying, but, but because um, they need his ministry... You know, he, he can still bear much fruit through his ministry. For that reason, maybe he ought to stick around a bit longer. But he's not, you see his unselfishness in a way. Um, if he's going to stick around, it's only because they need him. And, and, uh, but I, I just love what he simply says, to live is Christ. I mean, that is yeah. wonderful yes. to see. That, that his Christ is his life, yeah. and doing Christ's mission yeah. is his life. Yeah. And if he dies then he'll have more of Christ because this life, in a sense, being in this body separates us from our mm. from full fellowship with Christ. So if, since his life is Christ, it's just going to yeah. be game to die. So he's not afraid at all. I, I just remember that, and you might be able to help me here. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain, to walk his path or something, to walk the narrow way. There is no peace, no joy, no thrill. Like walking in his will, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. That must be, mm. you know, in youth praise. <laughs> um, but that's it's, that's it. We've done it. We're about to hear the music. <laughs> but I, I, I started singing too early. But uh, I, it's daunting, that's what I would say, <laughs> reading Paul's example. Yeah. And then he says, be imitators of me. I love that because it's only a humble man could really say that. You know, you know, we're supposed to be imitators of Christ, but somehow in reading Paul, we have to see how, how can we emulate this in our, in our lives. And maybe we've got some serious affliction and persecutions ahead of us, but preach Christ and you, it will be gain. It will be gain.